Namaskar my dear students. Today in the dental material section, we will be discussing dental amalgam. It is a very important topic theoretically as well as from the viva point of view. Many MCQs are also framed from this topic. Just go through the playlist of dental materials. In the previous video of dental amalgam, we have already discussed its composition, classification, setting reaction and the properties. In this video, we will be discussing the manipulation of dental amalgam and its recent advances. First, we come to the manipulation of dental amalgam. The clinical success of the amalgam restoration depends on its manipulation. In this, the first step is the selection of the alloy. The second is the mercury alloy ratio, the control that should be taken, mechanical trituration that is the mixing, condensation of amalgam and last is the carving and finishing of dental amalgam restoration. So let us discuss them one by one. First is the selection of alloy in this. The two prerequisites, the first thing is that it should have good strength, especially high resistance to the marginal fracture. And second is its corrosion resistance. If we talk about mercury, the only one requisite that it, that is its purity. Okay, the common contaminating element which is present in mercury is arsenic, which can cause pulpal damage and it also affects its physical properties. Okay, the high purity mercury is known as the triple distilled. Okay, now ADS specification number uh, six, it uh, says that for the dental mercury that first there should be no surface contamination and second less than 0.02% non-volatile residue should be left. Next is the selection of the delivery system. The amalgam alloy and the mercury are available in different forms. Okay, now that depends on the clinician preference what he is using. In this, the first is the alloy powder is available in a bottle and along with that mercury from the dispenser. Okay, now different dispensers have also come that can proportionate the mercury that we are using. This is the most common form of delivery system that we are using. Second is the alloy pellet. In the form of a pellet or a tab tablet, it is available. It is a pre-proportion and then the mercury is uh, taken from the dispenser. The third is the pre-proportioned alloy and the mercury. It is available in the capsule form. Okay. Now, in this, there is a consistent proportioning. And uh, we, we, you are aware that there will be low mercury alloy ratio because it is already pre-proportioned. Okay, then one more important advantage of these pre-proportioned cap capsule is that physical handling is not required. Okay, so it will reduce the health hazard also. Next is the mercury alloy ratio. Very important. You know, mercury only we need to have that much mercury which is required to produce a smooth and plastic mix. If there is more or excessive mercury, it will lead to more matrix phases. Okay, and this will lead to less strength of the set amalgam and more prone to corrosion. So we want minimum mercury. Now how we can reduce the excess mercury while we are uh, manipulating the amalgam? First, we can, we can use a squeeze cloth or a squeeze to, uh, to uh, squeeze out the excess mercury. Or second is the dryness technique. In this what happens that during the condensation each of the each increment we just uh, take off the excess mercury on the surface and then we add the next increment. Okay. Next comes the Eames technique. Eames technique also called as the minimal mercury technique. Okay. What does this technique recommend? The recommended ratio for the modern amalgam should be 1 is to 1 that is mercury is to alloy ratio should be 1 is to 1. More precise 50% of the mercury for the lathe cut and 42% for the spherical alloys because spherical alloys they need less mercury we discussed it earlier also.
okay now in the pre proportion capsule also uh, the which is determined by the manufacturer they usually keep the mercury less than 50% the third step in the manipulation of the mercury is trituration okay what is trituration it is the process of mixing of the alloy particles with the mercury in an amalgam now the objective of trituration often asked by the examiner in the viva first is the proper amalgamation that is the mixing of the mercury and the alloy you know all the particles of the alloy particles should be wet with the mercury and second the objective is that it rubs off the coating of the oxide film which is present on the surface of the alloy particles okay through abrasion so that is also one of the main objective then comes the types of the trituration two types are there hand trituration or the manual mixing which is done by a glass mortar and a pestle okay and second is the mechanical trituration for this the mechanical amalgamators are commonly used to mix the amalgam alloy and the mercury then the advantage of the mechanical trituration that first of all it saves the time you know the speed it ranges from 3200 to 4400 cycles per minute okay and second low mercury to alloy ratio that is also one of the uh, main advantage because the mechanical mixing it requires less mercury as compared to the hand mixing technique consistency of the proper mix okay the proper mix uh, when we have uh, when we are done with the trituration our mix should be smooth and it should have a soft consistency it should not be rough or grainy okay second it should have a shiny surface it should have a luster okay and third such a mix will be slightly warm when it is removed from the capsule so if these qualities are present that means we have achieved a proper mix next is the mulling mulling is the continuation of the trituration it improves the homogeneity of the mass and it gives a single consistent mix it can be done in two ways the first is that the mix it is enveloped in a dry piece of rubber dam and then rubbed between the first finger and the thumb or we can use thumb of one hand and the palm of another hand it is done for 2 to 5 seconds or what we can do the second method is that after trituration the pestle is removed and the mix is triturated in the pestle free capsule for 2 to 3 seconds now we come to the condensation or the packing of the dental amalgam okay the first thing is that the condensation should begin as soon as the trituration is completed if there is a delay what will happen that longer the delay lesser will be the strength of the final set there will be increased mercury content and also there will be increase in the cream you know a fresh mix of amalgam should be made if the condensation is taking longer than 3 to 4 minutes the main requirement for condensation is that the field of operation should be absolutely dry because if there is in, uh, incorporation of slightest moisture in the zinc containing amalgam it will lead to delayed expansion and this leads to the ultimate result uh, ultimate failure premature failure of the restoration now if we talk about the goal of the condensation the first thing is that we should compact the alloy in the prepared cavity so that the greatest possible density is attained this can only achieve the greatest strength second it should adapt well to the cavity wall and third it should remove excess mercury now two types of condensation are there manual condensation and the mechanical condensation we will be discussing this before going to uh, the techniques first the condensers the type of condensers can be circular oval triangular or square the condensation pressure which is very important the force per unit area the average is 3 to 4 pounds it is mainly determined by first the area of the condenser point or the face you know with a given force smaller the condenser will apply greater pressure 
and second the force exerted on it by the operator one more important point that for the spherical amalgams we use large condensers now these are some of the mcqs also which are framed now first if we talk about the manual condensation in this the mixed material is packed in increments the increments should be small each increment is carried to the prepared cavity with the help of amalgam carrier then the once inserted this is immediately condensed with an average pressure of 3 to 4 pounds you know as we condense it uh, some of the mercury rich material it rises to the surface so the surface will be shiny okay some of this uh, mercury rich layer can be removed and the remainder it will help in the bonding with the next increment next is the mechanical condensation the procedure and the principles it is just similar to the hand condensing only the thing is that the mechanical condenser which is a automatic device it provides vibration or the impact type of force to pack the amalgam mix main advantage is that less effort is needed than the hand condensation next we come to the carving the main objective of carving the restoration is to simulate the tooth anatomy the carving should be started until the amalgam is hard enough to offer resistance to the carving instrument now how we will uh, know that it is the correct time a scraping or a ringing sound should be heard when it is carved okay this is one of the viva question one of the mcqs which are asked if the carving is started too soon what will happen the amalgam may be too plastic and it will get pulled off from the margins now if we talk about the strokes of carving it should be given from the tooth surface to the amalgam another important viva question and mcq next is the burnishing after the carving is completed the surface should be smoothened by burnishing okay in this the application of firm but not heavy rubbing pressure is used the instrument called as ball burnisher is used to do the burnishing strokes should be given from the amalgam surface to the tooth another important viva question the final smoothing should be done uh, with rubbing the surface with a moist cotton pad after burnishing we come to the final polishing of the amalgam restoration the polishing should be done as it minimizes the corrosion and it and it also prevents adherence of the plaque okay uh, the final finishing it should not be done until the alloy is fully set that means a delay for 24 hours after condensation should be there it should be preferable and how the polishing is done a wet abrasive powder in the paste form with the polishing disc is used we should not use dry powder as it can cause rise in the temperature above 60 degree celsius next we come to the mercury toxicity you may get a separate short note also or it may be asked in the viva also regarding the mercury toxicity mercury has a cumulative toxic effect the dentist and the auxiliaries both are exposed to daily risk of mercury intoxication if we are using uh, amalgam restoration the primary risk is from the inhalation of the vapors uh, the other ways it can be absorbed is through the skin or by ingestion the maximum level of occupational exposure considered safe is 50 microgram of mercury per cubic meter of air per day this is another important multiple choice question the procedures which can arise the mercury is the trituration condensation finishing and the old restoration removal now we come to the precautions that can help to prevent the mercury toxicity first is that the clinic should be well ventilated second the excess mercury and the amalgam waste it should be stored in a well sealed container it should not be uh, allowed to get into the sink okay then uh, the vacuum cleaner should not be used then skin contact should be cleaned with a soap and water 
and while removing the old fillings the water spray suction mouth mask should be used to prevent any kind of uh, contact next are the recent advances or the modifications in the dental amalgam first are the bonded amalgam in this various adhesive systems or the bonding agents are designed to bond the amalgam to the uh, enamel and the dentine second are the gallium alloys to develop mercury free restorative material gallium was introduced and it has been shown that silver gallium it has physical and mechanical properties similar or even better than the silver amalgam third are the mercury free direct filling silver alloys in this the mercury is coated on the silver tin particles which can be self welded by compaction to create a restoration now next are the fluoride releasing amalgam it mainly contains the uh, fluoride leachable or the acid etchable uh, glass particles it Uh, reduces the possibility of secondary decay and it provides a karyostatic effect on the surrounding tooth structure next are the selenium containing alloys it mainly contains 0.01 to 5% of selenium by weight and when it is mixed with the silver tin copper amalgam it increases the initial compressive strength and also improves the mechanical properties of the set amalgam next are the indium containing alloys you know these indium containing alloys this is mainly uh, decreases the mercury evaporation when the indium concentration is increased from 0 to 14% there is a drastic decrease in the mercury vapor it is commercially available as indies purse then comes the pre amalgamated alloys right from the name itself the surface of the alloy particles they have been introduced to mercury by the manufacturer itself for the rapid amalgamation after trituration to make it a pre compacted pellets okay now this will reduce the total mercury content to less than 40% so that's all for this topic my dear students i am sure this video will really help you to write down your theory exam as well as to answer questions in your viva don't forget to share and like the video with your friends and your juniors you can give your topics in the comment section wish you success today and always